Hello, hello. I am again with Dan the Man of Dan's Custom Machining. I am in Williamsburg, Ohio, and today we're going to talk a little bit about tooling. So Dan, previously we've talked about the rigidity and importance of a Herco, uh, giving you the rigidity you need for the products that you make here, some of those harder materials. We've talked about the Chick Vices giving you that same similar rigidity and then ease of use and switching in and out of the machine as well. But part of the process to go along with this big plus standard on the Herco machine is the cutting tools. What is your preferred cutting tool? My preferred cutting tool that we use here is a MCO carbide, which is made up in northern Ohio. is actually their manufacturing plant. Uh, we really like their nine flute end mills. They got an IPT uh, and an IPC. IPC has the chip breaker in it, so like for this here, it has a chip breaker, uh, inch and three quarter length of cut. Uh, won't make a long stringy chip because it has those chip breakers, and we can take. With just a half inch tool, we can take an inch and three quarter depth of cut uh, and do 30, 35 thou radial at the same time and not snap a half inch shank and feed it at roughly around 170 inches a minute and 4140. Wow. That's one of those things that some people are going to comment uh, when we put this online and go, I got to see that to believe it. <laughs> So I look forward to being able to watch that bad boy run. So you said nine flutes. You also said made here in the USA, correct? Yep. Yep. They, their manufacturing plant is up in northern Ohio, up near Toledo. So with all the reshoring that's going on right now, maybe a great product to invest into. And you mentioned this is for the harder materials, but you also utilize them for some aluminums as well, right? Yeah. Yeah. We, we utilize everything from the harder to we use their they got a coated three flute series that we use a lot for aluminum that allows us to push. Uh, they also do offer, if you need a higher performance in aluminum and you really want to crank it up, they even offer a five flute in aluminum now with a chip breaker in it even. So you can really push your, on your larger diameter cutting tools, you can get that five flutes and even up your feet even more. I guess I've always been under the misunderstanding that less flutes and aluminum is better. I'm thinking two flutes get those chips out of there. When you say five flutes, I think stickiness, you know, so something they're doing very well, obviously. Yeah, yeah, it's, I mean, once you start cramming five flutes in there, it's about the geometry of the flute design. And then, of course, from a lower flute standpoint, you, you can take more of a radial, but you can't feed as fast, whereas you, you got to find that happy median when you're really pushing stuff to see if a five flute's gonna benefit. Some situations we do, it makes sense to. Other cases, the return on investment isn't there, but their three flute option is an amazing choice for economics and performance. Uh, speed, feed, depth of cut, surface feet, these are games we play every day, isn't it? Yep, <laughs> yep, it's a fine line between making it hum and making it break. <laughs> That's right. I love going online and looking at some of those blooper reels of the oops, went a little too deep, or sometimes, sometimes you think you're not supposed to go as fast, and that will actually break it instead of speeding it up and going faster. Yep. So yeah, fun game we play. What's the service like when you deal with these guys? You're obviously in Ohio as well, so they're kind of local to you guys. Is it good service for you? You get tools, you know, pretty quickly? Yeah, tool, tool service is great. Our local distributor here that we buy through is a small local guy, Cox Tool. Uh, I Usually anything Emco, if they have it in stock up in Toledo, he has it next day for me here. Uh, great turnaround as far as good stock quality that they keep in stock up there. Uh, customer service is awesome up there. If you have a question, you can call, get answers. Uh, just real good company and real good support. Well, there's a lot of great tooling companies out there for sure. And there's a ton of competition when it comes to, you know, cutting tools. But you're pretty, maybe not exclusive, but you rely on MCO a lot to, to service and support what you do here. Yeah, yeah, MCO is a big part of what we do here. I mean, we're pretty invested heavily in them because we believe in what they're doing and the quality. I mean, our whole CAM tool library is set up with, we spent time and had everything set up to where we don't even have to program feeds and speeds when we click a tool out of the library. It's already preset. We know it's going to work and it's going to work right. That to me sounds convenient. 
Very convenient. Yeah, I've, again, back to those speed feeds and depth of cuts. I've made many, many mistakes in my life. So having that convenience is definitely a bonus as well. Yep, yeah, and we, we carry a large range of everything that they offer here in-house so we can compete with quick turn times and whatnot. So Dan, when working with MCO, what's your average for largest tool to smallest tool? Because you use everything in that range, right? What's, your, what's the largest that you use with them and the smallest that you use with them on average? Our largest tool that we use with them would be a three quarter inch that we run a lot of. Uh, we, we run this to get, if we need a beefier end mill to take something and want the core support, we'll use their three quarter inch. It looks like tools. a monster. Yeah. This is, we've used as much as a four inch flute length from them for a three quarter inch before. So. Wow, that is impressive. And what about the smallest? Our smallest would be a 364 cent mill that we use for steel. Uh, we use this to cut a lot of cutting tools in that for harder material. Okay, and so that 12,000 RPM of the Herco spindle gets that 364 uh, little tool going, huh? Yep. <laughs> You're, you're winding the Herco out at its 12,000, trying to make it work its way in. <laughs> That's true, but 12,000 RPM, um, to be fair for anyone, when you get to those small diameters, we're talking surface feet, and now we're playing another game. Yep. You're, you're playing a huge game of RPM when you're talking small diameter tools. That is, that is a fun game that i played for many years. Uh, so I appreciate you sharing a little bit about what you're utilizing here as far as tooling to support this detailed, precise, and oftentimes very difficult machining practice that you have here at Dan's Custom Machining. Um, and I learned a little bit about the MCO tools today. Uh, I hope you guys did as well. Um, great American brand here in Ohio. So thank you again for, for sharing this information. Yep. Thanks, Tony. I appreciate it.